Hey, welcome back on today's Food is Medicine. We're continuing our food politics series. Krista Recchio, clinical nutritionist at The Whole Journey, is here along with Dr. Rajesh Grover, a cell and molecular biologist from Scripps. Uh, he's going to present the scientific community's perspective on genetically modified foods. Thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, so just to bring you up to speed in case you missed um, last week on our food politics series, we actually interviewed a documentary filmmaker and researcher on sort of the perils of genetically modified foods. And this week we sort of want to bring in a different perspective. Just to be clear, what we're talking about here when we talk about GMOs are, are, are crops um, that have basically been modified in a lab to try to improve them, uh, try to improve resistance to herbicides and improve nutrition, right? That's what we're talking about, just so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start um, first with you, doctor. Um, tell me if you would, as a, as a molecular biologist, what your opinion of GMOs is. So I guess basically we have to understand why GMOs. So we need GMOs for two fundamental reasons. One is that to protect our food and crops mm -hmm. from invasive microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, and pests. And second is yield, which is nutrient value. You can do it with chemicals like pesticides, but we have known from historical reasons that throwing any chemical, unwanted chemical on our, on our food is not very healthy. It gets into the food chain and there are a lot of problems. Other way of doing it is by genetically modifying it. So that can be done by three different ways. One is natural selection. Nature does it all the time. Second is hybridization. You, you basically do hybridization in horses to get different kind of traits and whatnot. And third one is introducing selectively one gene or two genes to get the trait you want. And you can all do pretty much all three of them in a laboratory setting. So tell me your opinion of them, because there are lots of folks out there that say, these things are the devil, we need, to, we need to do away with them, this is terrible, this is the worst. I think the most important thing is to understand it at a molecular level, okay. what exactly is happening. You are scared of something because you don't understand it, so you got to understand it really well. So I will break down for you what it means. A GMO and non-GMO food what is happening is that, like I said, we are introducing a gene in order or hoping to avoid using chemicals, mm -hmm. pesticides, or protect our crops from infections and whatnot. And uh, uh, so fundamentally, when you break down a food, you can break down in five major components. Proteins, carbohydrates, minerals, vitamins that comes into small molecules, and DNA. If a food is coming from GMO or non-GMO, body doesn't know. Our cells does not understand the source. What they understand is chemical structure. As long as we test our GMO food or any new variety for any new chemical that is being formed, whether it's a protein or a small molecule, we are okay. It's a WHO mandate on WHO website that if you are introducing any genetically modified food, it has to be tested rigorously. Krista wants to get in on this. I think. Well, well, so um, so well, there's three ways that we can genetically modify. Two are natural, and one is not so natural. It introduces a foreign gene, and I can completely understand the argument that we need to produce more food, and it has to be sustainable. But as it stands right now, they're still using pesticides on GMOs with the way they're using the foreign genes. So how can we produce GMOs from plant genes that are more natural, kind of going back to the crossbreeding originally of the 1800s, how do we do that in a way that most people feel it's, it's more natural and safe and there are no pesticides needed? Very good question. I would say scientifically, theoretically speaking, this is all possible and this is called new breed of GMOs. Mm -hmm. Tweaking multiple genes in a plant to get the trait without introducing any foreign gene. This article, uh, this magazine is world's number one uh, science magazine and Nature. this issue in May was dedicated dedicated to GMOs okay. and uh, and basically what it says here it's talking about that new, new breed, breed exactly of GMOs what, where we what don't you're need. asking people are, are scientists are already working on it 
where you're not manipulating proteins and you're using other plants. Basically, you're not bringing a foreign gene, you're tweaking plant mm -hmm. native gene to get a trait you want. I or carrying it from a different plant instead of some insects or whatnot, right. which people are really scared. I was reading um, <coughs> one, one study that said some 60 to 70 percent of, of the food found on grocery store shelves um, are GMOs, basically. Yeah. So are you okay with eating it? Are you fine with that? If you have kids, are you fine with giving your kids those genetically modified foods, or does it give you pause at all? So uh, to being a scientist, no. No. Because I truly understand at a fundamental level, molecular level, what has changed. There are 1,700 plus studies on GMOs, scientific studies in peer-reviewed journals that says there are no side effects, meaning that there are no new allergens or toxic chemicals that are being introduced as a result of GMO. As far as uh, sustainability is concerned, the reason I would go to a Whole Food or some other store is because I believe in sustainable agriculture. I believe not spraying chemicals on our food crops. And you can actually grow a GMO in an organic fashion. That that's would be the new wave. That's not happening right now. If that happens, that would you change would be totally the face of GMOs. Mm -hmm. And then you have to check the nutrient density. We were talking right before the segment. Does it change the nutrient density? Where you've always known an orange or an apple has a certain amount of vitamin C, right. and then all of a sudden you're creating something different, and so that needs to be rectified. And uh, I think that's where the bridge is right. in, in this whole argument. So in other words, genetically modified food, uh, they is a possibility that biochemical pathways might change and nutrient value might change. But we have the testing abilities. If vitamin E was, say, 100 milligram before, now it is, I don't know, 110 or 98. As long as we know, mm -hmm. we just have to change the amount and fix it that way. Interesting. Um, this is a <coughs> fascinating discussion. I wish we had more time because I have a whole list of, of, of questions, but we'll definitely continue the, the discussion. And uh, there's definitely a lot of um, different opinions to this. So thank you both for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and by the way, Krista offers online coaching on her website, The Whole Journey. We've posted a link on our website, Scene on Tab. Just go there, fox5sandiego.com. Click that Scene on Tab.